Hello, America. I, I was writing on the board here, prepare, and then I decided, no, it shouldn't be prepare. Call 911 because you are being robbed. You're being robbed. And there's an incredible game going on of watch the other hand. This is an episode that you want to DVR, watch a couple of times, really get it down, and share it with friends. You, of course, will call the police if you know you're being robbed. You, of course, will say something if you know you're being robbed. Right now, there's an argument in the country that the rich are robbing you. They're not paying their fair share. But is that really who's robbing you? I find it interesting that we're being taught to hate. There are lots of enemies now in America. There's a ton of them. There's big oil. Oh, I hate those guys. Wall Street, all of Wall Street. What changed the world was Wall Street. But that's now bad. Coal kept people warm. Provides almost 50% of all of our energy. It's bad. Fast food. I kind of kind of go with that, although it works well to help things start moving along. You know what I'm saying? Banks are bad. Since when are banks bad? Man has always had banks. You have to have banks. Banks are bad. Salt and fat is bad. Doctors cutting people's feet off. And freeze tag. Freeze tag, we told you. New York progressives are saying, oh, we've got to protect the children. There are villains everywhere. Now, are there villains in each of these categories? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. Well, not the freeze tag thing. This is ridiculous. But there are villains, but not the whole thing. Not, not all banks, bankers, some banks, sure. But we're not going after them. Why aren't we prosecuting anyone? If there's so much corruption happening, shouldn't it be easy to start prosecuting corporations and individuals that are causing the problems that we're having? But we're not. Why is that? go back to this board because you're being robbed and the bad guys are part of it they're part of the whole look at all these bad things it's misdirection let me ask you this what's the progressive dream for the banking industry for really all industries to have one there's no choice you just have one universal health care you have one bank the Bank of America Hamilton was even for a one bank one-stop shop does it all. Issue currency, dish out loans, everything. You got it all. One single bank. Take competition out, or at least make all the competition subservient to that one bank. Competition, you know, is evil. Well, you can't get your kids to compete anymore. No, let's not get. Let's give everybody a trophy. Our system was built on competition. Now we couldn't get people to buy into the whole bank thing until they changed the name of that bank idea to the Federal Reserve. And even today, people think, oh, the Federal Reserve, oh, it's part of the government. No, it's not. It is an evil corporation. It has nothing to do with the federal government. It is the biggest bank of all. But yet nobody's picketing that bank. Nobody's going after that bank. None of these clowns, none of these people on the left are even talking about the Federal Reserve. Why is that? Progressives today refer to bankers as greedy fat cats. We've heard it over and over again. We didn't want a fat cat bill. This orgy of focusing on the super wealthy and Wall Street without regulation, the very people who drove us into this ditch. I did not run for office to be helping out a bunch of uh, you know, fat cat bankers on Wall Street. I have to tell you, Mr. President, no one elected you to do that. No one. I'm not for that either. Nobody. I don't know a soul that says, oh, we got to give that money. But yet you were the one who voted for it in Congress. And you're the one who did QE1, QE2, stimulus. You, did, you gave them all the bailouts after you took office. The problem in America now is responsibility and the lack of it. Nobody will take responsibility for a thing they do or a thing they say, any action. It's never their fault. I make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. I'll take responsibility for what I've done. Why is it we can't find anyone to take responsibility? Or they'll say these big fat cat bankers, but they'll never identify them. Well, tonight we're going to identify them. We're going to begin. Let's look at who's really doing this. Who specifically, Mr. President, 
Doctors are ripping the tonsils out of children and cutting off their feet? My gosh, that's an open and shut case. You'll be the most popular president on the planet if you can show me one, one that did that. Let's put that doctor in jail. There's something that would unite us. Who's for that? The bankers that caused this? Round them up. You'll be the most popular president. Just make the case. We all want to ensure this never happens again. They also talk about speculators all the time. Speculators. Now the speculators are the ones driving up the oil. Who are the speculators? Those aren't the hedge funds, are they? Because hedge funds are completely, hear me, America, completely unregulated. You know, the hedge funds like the one that George Soros runs? Unregulated. Well, why aren't we going after the un unregulated hedge funds? Really? No. Nobody in Washington will tell you. Nobody will tell you. I believe because so many people in Washington have dirty hands. And there's also a lot of people that are making a lot of money right now. I believe the dirtiest of them all are in on it. And when I say in on it, what is it? Oh, what is it? The biggest theft of money in the history of all mankind on planet Earth. That's what this is. The theft of your savings. The theft of your 401ks. You still have your 401k. But what's going on now makes Bernie Madoff look like my son. Last night I got home and my son took Angry Birds on the phone away from my, uh, my daughter. And they got into a fight of that. And I'm like, oh, knock it off, you two. But that, what's going on makes Bernie Madoff look like that. And it's all under the guise of helping you. Well, I thought about this this morning, and I want to lay this out for you, because I think I can make a case with It's a Wonderful Life. What was the problem? The problem was there was a run on the bank. Do you remember the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? You have Mr. Potter in It's a Wonderful Life. He wants the power and control of what? The old building and loan. So the problem was there was a run on the bank that could lead to a depression, which it was the depression. The solution was Potter would bail everybody out. Solution two, understand what Potter really wanted. So here's Mr. Potter, the evil banker. Just like to show you that we have a modern day Mr. Potter. It's Ben Bernanke. He runs the Fed. There's a run on the bank. Mr. Potter wants to help. There's a run on the bank. There's a collapse of the system. Mr. Bernanke wants to help. He's willing to bail the building and loan out. He's willing to bail the U.S. banks out. The town folks lose money because of his help. Citizens, you, lose money because of his help. The goal, control of the town. You'll have to figure out what Ben Bernanke's goal is. People panicked. They panicked. They said, we're not going to get their money. So there was Mr. Potter, if you remember, offering 50 cents on the dollar. Did you get your money? No. Well, I did. Old man Potter will pay 50 cents on the dollar for every share you got. 50 cents on the dollar? Yes, cash. Cash? They all turned around. Even though Potter was ripping people off. He was collapsing the building and loan for his gain. And yet he was hailed by many in town as the hero, saving the day. There's a lot of, po I mean, you should watch the show over again because you can identify everybody in, in, um, in America today. For instance, I can show you the unions. The unions right now are talking about their pensions. Who are they? They're Tom. Do you remember this character from the movie? All right, Tom, how much do you need? $242. Oh, Tom, just enough to tide you over into the bank. Room. I'll take $242. That's what happened. Those are the people who are now saying, we're all in this together, gang. We're all in this together. So who are you? Who are you? Well, if you've been watching this show, I've been trying to tell you, take six, please. I've been trying to, trying to get you to... Enlightenment, education, empowerment, and entrepreneurship. Be creative. Be enlightened. Know who you are. Know what you believe in. Education. Empowerment. It's up to you. And be creative. Stick together. If we stick together, what I've been trying to say to you is we all become Mrs. Davis. Do you remember Mrs. Davis and what she did? Could I have 1750? 
<laughs> I sure are. Of course you're going to have them. You got 50 cents? Because that's all she needed. We'll get to George Bailey here in a minute. But the run on the bank, that was Potter's way of taking advantage of and control of the town and destroy anybody who was in competition. Well, quite honestly, Mr. Potter did that. Mr. Bernanke did the same thing. It was TARP. It was stimulus. It was QE1, QE2. Do you remember the claims? TARP. We have to abandon the free market system in order to save it. That was George W. Bush. Because the Fed told him, you have to abandon it to save it. There's not going to be any money left. Stimulus, if we didn't have stimulus, Barack Obama said, there'd be another Great Depression. QE1, QE2, keeping all of America afloat. Well, who got the money from TARP and, and QE1 and QE2? Who got all that money? Banks. The banks did. Mr. Potter gets the money. Mr. Potter gets the money. QE, quantitative easing. That's just a fancy word for saying, well, would you, we have the printing press, just print more. Well, who gets that money? Let me show you a quote I showed you yesterday from the Huffington Post. The potential for further extraordinary official assistance to large players in the U.S. financial sector poses a negative risk to the government's credit rating. Hold this here. Large players in the U.S. financial sector. Remember, George Bailey, George Bailey, he's a small player. He's the large player. The savings and loans, the small mom and pop banks around the, uh, around the country now, those are the small players. Large financial institutions are going to get, the more, going to get more money. Potter wins. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Our government keeps bailing the banks out over and over and it's not working. So that leads you to this question. If you know anything about critical thinking, you've got to go, wait a minute, why are they doing it? Well, they're A, incredibly stupid, B, they're insane, or somebody's making money and they're in on it. I contend the greatest threat, the greatest theft in history is happening right now. And they are in on it. And it has been led by Mr. Potter, the Federal Reserve. Let's look at a couple of things here. Because we know they're not crazy, we know they're not insane, right? Because all the top Harvard minds, we got the pipe, all the Harvard minds are in on this one. So it can't be that they're crazy, they're insane, or they're just too stupid. But even I can, a dummy like me, can read a chart. Let me show you how the dollar performed. Here's the dollar, declining U.S. dollar. Now, I want to show you in comparison how oil has performed. Watch this. This is the dollar, and this is oil. Do you notice that if I folded it over, it's almost, almost a mirror? Why? What's happening there? As the dollar continues to fall, energy prices continue to rise. Well, why is that? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, I mean, it can't be because, you know, well, somebody wants energy prices to rise. Who would want higher energy prices? Who would want them to skyrocket? That's, that's insane, don't you think? My plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Okay, yeah, that would be insane. Put the chart back up, please. See, because if you look at this chart again, um, something's going on here. There's no cap and trade here. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Common sense. If we use common sense and stop listening to, to Washington and uh, Harvard, people, we'll see that that's a mirror. Let the numbers speak for themselves. You see, the price of oil is pegged to the dollar. Everyone in the world uses the dollar to buy oil. It's the gold standard. So you go to OPEC, you must use a dollar to buy it. So as the dollar goes down in value, the Saudis just raise their price. If it goes up, they lower the price. If it goes down, they raise the price. That's what's happening. 
It's not that hard to figure out. They raise their plot price in direct correlation of the falling dollar. The price of gas is not going up. The dollar is going down. Now, who is responsible for that? Who's responsible for the little red line here? Mr. Potter, the Federal Reserve. The news reports always say things like this. The euro hits a 16-month high. Oh, my goodness. The headline should read, the dollar is falling like a skydiver with no parachute and Europe is the ground. How could the euro be gaining ground? To buy the British, British pound, it used to take $1.95. Today, today it, took, it takes uh, $1.65. Well, oh, wait a minute. Holy cow. Fold this paper in half and look at the correlation. It's almost as if the dollar going down makes the euro go up. Notice, it's almost identical. Everything in the world is measured against our dollar. Who's responsible for the value of the dollar going down and making the euro skyrocket? It's again Mr. Potter, Ben Bernanke. Here's a report on the dollar today. The dollar took a beating Wednesday, losing ground to a range of currencies, and it's uh, falling, and, uh, and falling to its lowest level since the, uh, against the euro in 15 months. So we're flooding the market with trillions of dollars. Trillions of dollars. And it's not having any positive effect. I mean, are you, do you have a job at McDonald's? It was a big deal that McDonald's was hiring people. All it has done is make your dollar worth less and soon worthless. It has also caused energy prices to rise, food prices to rise, enrich large financial institutions. The best thing you can say about the mass injection of cash is, well, we have delayed the inevitable collapse. That's why I was actually for the first TARP package for three days, because it did delay the inevitable collapse. But it took me three days to reverse myself because I said on the third day, they're not warning you. They're not telling you to prepare. It's not a good thing to delay the collapse if you don't prepare. They're preparing. How do I know? Well, let's look at the stock market. H have, have you noticed the stock market's doing really well? Up 52 points, 12,506. Now, has anybody bothered to look into why the stock market is so high when clearly things on the ground, when businesses aren't doing well, when gas prices, everything else, how has the stock market stayed up in the middle of this? You look at the drastic rise of energy cost. I mean, America's outlook, it's good when our energy prices are going to continue to rise and go through the roof. D.C. already has $5 a gallon gasoline. There are reports of $6 on the way. The effects... And that is more than just you driving to work and heating, which are huge. Everything that gets shipped will be higher. Food, clothes, everything that has to go onto a train is made in a machine. Your soap, everything is based in oil. How could it possibly be that Wall Street is going through the roof? Crude oil. Here's the average. Markets continue to rise. It's not phased. Well, let me show you a few events. Tunisia. Show Tunisia. Put Tunisia. Here's the Tunisian uprisings. Look at this. Tunisia uprisings. A little blip when you get to uh, Egypt. The unrest in the Middle East. And Li Libya. There's Libya. Here's where we go to war in Libya. Boom. And then right back up. Now look at this. This is massive uprising in the Middle East where all of our oil is. What the heck is going on? Obama's pumping more money to the rebels, and they appear to be losing, and, but the market continues to rise. Doesn't make the market freak out? What will? What caused this? What happened here? Well, the market kicked off a two-month plunge. 17% loss. What sparked it? The end of QE1 was approaching, and the large financial institutions would lose their sugar daddy. Look at that. This caused investors to warn of a seismic shift in the market if something wasn't done. So the markets dropped. But have no fear, because the market recovered on its own. Well, not really on its own. Let me show you. QE2 was announced, and the market went back up again. 
The large financial institutions got more money, but danger is never far. QE2 coming to an end in June. There are reports that when it ends, there'll be another massive plunge, 20% in the stock market. There are already rumblings that when QE2 ends, done. Job for QE3, more money for, quote, the large financial institutions. Not the old building and loan, but the large financial institutions, the Fed. And so the stock market continues to rise because the large financial institutions are safe and secure. But what happens every time we build, uh, print billions of dollars to keep the world from busting wide open? Your dollar becomes worth less. This is theft. Much more. Stay where you are. I'm Robert Shapiro. Over a million people. Did you get your money? No. Well, I did. Old man Potter will pay 50 cents on the dollar for every share you got. 50 cents on the dollar? Yes, cash. Cash. 50 cents on the dollar. My thesis is Ben Bernanke is Mr. Potter. There's an emergency, and he's paying cash. He'll help bail you out. The old building and loan. So how far, how low can your dollar go? Well, in the last eight years, your dollar has lost 21.4%. It's now worth 79 cents. Not a dollar, 79 cents. Let me explain it this way. If you wanted to have retirement and, and all you had in the whole world was $10,000. You had $10,000 and you had it sitting in an eight-year in an, in an eight period. You had it sitting in the bank. Because they're inflating our money, they have just taken this much away from you. Stolen. It's gone. You now have $8,000. Mr. Potter has taken $2,000 of your hard-earned money. And where did it go? To the bank. You need to understand, the stock market goes up with quantitative easing. Why? They're playing with your money by making it cheaper. They are playing with your money. They also uh, want to do this, not only to get rich themselves, but also to keep the market up. Because if people realize the stock market is at 5000 the jig is up. They'll start to say, whoa, whoa, what are you guys doing over here? But that's a stupid sign for all of us that things are good. And if you freak out, then what do you do? Then you figure this one out. What do you do? You start buying gold. Yeah. I told you to be prepared. Oh, geez, how many years ago? Be prepared. I told you to buy gold. I was called nuts, a fear monger, everything else. New York Times got in on that one. Oh, I was horrible. Look at the front page of the New York Times today. What's it say? Prices surge as investors rush to safety of gold. Now it's safety. George Soros earlier this year dramatically upped his investment in gold, despite calling it the ultimate bubble just weeks earlier. He says it's a bubble, and then he goes and buys it. And he's not buying paper. The University of Texas just bought a billion dollars in physical gold. They want the tangible gold. Why? Because they fear a shortage. Because just like this, okay, this is only worth what we print on here. This is worthless. Paper is worthless. At the end of this game, this is all you have left is just worthless paper. If you read history, you know that. By the way, you might be interested. Do you know who the biggest holder of gold is in the world? Coming in at number three is the International Monetary Fund. Basket of currencies. Hmm. Number two is Germany. Number one, the United States of America. But is that really true? I mean, I'm assuming it is, but who's holding it? You might think that it's at Fort Knox. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Ron Paul and Jason Chaffetz, among others, have demanded to see the gold at Fort Knox, but the congressmen, they're not showing the gold at Fort Knox. Government won't show it. I guess we're on the trust system. Do you trust the government? I'll tell you where a lot of gold is, the Federal Reserve. 22% of all of the world's gold holdings is in the basement in lower Manhattan, 80 feet below street level and 50 feet below sea level. You're told not to buy gold. They have 22% of the gold. They keep making your dollar worth less and telling you not to do it. Not to, what is it the New York Times says? Rush to the safety of gold wants to help, willing to bail things out. Citizens lose because of help. The goal is to control, get control of the town, to make it Potterville. Hmm. 
I would wonder what the Fed's goal is. I mean, I'm sure it has something to do. It's benevolent, I'm sure. It probably has a lot to do with the, with the golden rule. You know, he who has the gold wins. We are um, all nibbling around the edges, and taxes and everything else, and budget cuts. But nobody's really talking about your money. I told you a little while ago, if you had this much money, $10,000, in your bank account uh, eight years ago, you now, in reality, only have $8,000. Because $2,000 has been stolen. How? Well, we've been laying it out with It's a Wonderful Life. Mr. Potter, the banker, the old building alone, wanted to help when there was a crisis. He was willing to bail people out, 50 cents on the dollar. Townsfolk would lose because of their help, the 50 cents, because he really wanted to control the town. Ben Bernanke has done the same thing. He's responsible, as we've shown you in the first half hour of this program, he's responsible for printing of our money, and that's what's happened. They have digitized and put money out and devalued our dollar. Go back to the first half hour of this show and share those charts with your friends. They're staggering. Why would someone intentionally want to do this? Why would this happen? It's a wonderful life. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about, I know. <laughs> well, I, I, I've said too much. I... You're the, you're the board here. You do what you want with this thing. There's just one thing more, though. This town needs this measly one-horse institution, if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. I'm talking about the building and loan. Jimmy Stewart said it best there when he said, uh, something what's gnawing at you is it's something you can't get your fingers on. That's what bothers progressives. They can't control you. They can't have you free, because you're going to mess their plans up. I'm building Potterville. Power and money. If you believe the system is broken, you have a responsibility to fix it. But they don't believe in you. Progressives don't believe in you. The Fed would never be doing this if they believed in you. Nobody is helping the small businessman. They're all helping the large financial institutions. Since when did we become a country of banks? Remember, Mr. Potter thought people were just living in crappy houses. They're never going to pay you back. Oh, that guy, oh, he came to me for a loan. We turned him down. But George Bailey believed in people. I grew up in a small business. My dad was a baker, as was his dad and his dad before him. I made it on my own. My parents couldn't afford to send me to college. They couldn't afford to buy me a car or afford to help me out with insurance. Nothing. I was 18, and I didn't expect anything. No one handed me anything. This was the only place in the world where that could happen, where we, we helped each other. Look, the world is changing. It is changing. Everything is about to change. And those who have power and money know it. Think of how many people are going to lose their power. Or already have, but what's coming is much bigger and better. The record companies. When I was in uh, radio for, at uh, 13 I got into radio, and you had to have a record company. You, I mean, it was everything. You had to have a record promoter. You couldn't just go do it. Not anymore. Now you have... YouTube and Facebook and iTunes. There's ways to get your music out there. If it's good, you just put it out there. You do it yourself and go direct to the person. That, the music industry, the record industry is almost over. When's the last time you even saw a record store? Netflix. Netflix just got into a deal with uh, Kevin Spacey. They just agreed to do a new TV series together. On Netflix? Really? No network. Netflix reportedly paid $200 million for 26 episodes. No network. So now what happens to the power players at NBC and ABC and CBS? Oh, they don't like it. Those executives, they do not like this. The individual doesn't need a power player anymore. And I believe that's why they're telling you, don't prepare. Don't pre they're creating a system to where you have to come to them. 
You don't have a choice. No money, no job. But there will always be the Fed. There will always be the government. They will have theirs, which is actually yours. But you will not. I challenge the President of the United States and those communists to stop talking about the greedy bankers and name them as individuals. If they are, if they're dirty and corrupt, let's, let's vet them. Let's get them out of there. Can't we unite on that? Remember, he didn't run to help out the fat cat bankers on Wall Street. Banks are good. They're necessary. I'm tired of hearing about the evil rich people. I know many rich people who are very, very good and give so much more and even make less than the president and give much more. Mr. President, look at the people around you. George Soros, he's only worth $14.5 billion. Nancy Pelosi, $21.7 million. Timothy Geithner, he's between $740 and $1.7 million. They're all rich. Are they bad guys or good guys? I don't know because I'm being told they're bad, but yet I'm being told they're bad by the guys I'm being told are good. Help me out. Instead of blanketing and making everyone hate rich people, which makes us hate the system, can you name the people specifically and then maybe get the Department of Justice to go after those people? Because I think we'd all be, we're all with you, Mr. President. No more bailouts for anyone of any size. That's not the government's job. And you said it yourself, you weren't elected to do that. So why don't you start naming them specifically and start going after them and praising the system? Unless, of course, unless, of course, you don't really like the system and you would like to see it trashed so you could start a whole new system. Back in a minute. My thesis has been that Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life is Mr. Bernanke from the Fed. The Fed is the real villain that no one is willing to talk about. And the real victim is the small individual, the George Bailey's. I want you to understand what the Fed is. The Fed, so many people think, oh, well, the Fed, that's part of the United States government. It's not. It is the central bank of the United States. It's a corporation of banks. It's a company. It's the biggest. Anybody who is anti-company, this is the biggest, most powerful company in the world. In the world. But nobody's even questioning it. It formulates the nation's monetary policy. It supervises and regulates all of the banks. We don't even know who the banks are. It'd be like somebody who's not elected going to Congress and just start legislating in secret. We don't know who they are. We can't look at any of their books. Next Wednesday, the Fed will have the first regularly scheduled press conference in 97 years. Now, you could say that's a step towards transparency, but I say that's a step towards Potterville. Because what they're doing right now in America is they're gobbling up all the savings and loans and creating a system where you have to crawl to them. Ask your local bank how things are going. Ask them about how charming Elizabeth Warren is. She's charming, but she's with Mr. Potter. She's part of the Treasury. It's in the, tre it's in the Treasury Department, but you can't question her anymore because it's part of the Fed. Why in the world? Are we coming so close to talking about another possible collapse, another massive bailout for the banks? Because this whole system, this, all this regulation that they've just put in, is not designed from stopping them from failing. That was the reason the early explorers braved the Atlantic Ocean. Why? To find a new land in the first place? No. They wanted to find a place to where they could be free and not controlled. That new regulation is to control you, not them. They were coming from a system where if you weren't in a special elite group, you could not function. That's what our founders and our, our pilgrims wanted. Think of, it as, think of it as Mr. Potter. Well, George, come to work for me. No, no, Mr. Potter. First, it's tempting, but no, Mr. Potter. George Bailey knew he was going to be destroyed when he said it, but he said it anyway. And here we, we've had 200 years to get away from that system. 
and we've created it all over again. I happen to be one that believes in the Frank Capra version of America, where individual liberty is still ahead of cronyism, that it still exists. It doesn't exist in our institutions, or many of them, there are some. But the important place for that to exist is in the hearts and minds of the American people, and that's what matters. That's why they are trying so hard to target your children in schools. That financial reform bill, that wasn't written for them, it was written for you. There's a book, New Deal, Raw Deal, by uh, Burton Folsom, Jr. Bert is a, a friend of the program, and in this he tells a story about how big businesses used FDR's NRA code to destroy small businesses. There was a small Houston jeweler that discovered that the new jewelry code barred him for advertising prices on watch repairing. Five large jewelers had colluded with the NRA to clamp down on discounts. He was forced to quit. The large jewelers went on. Lumber Company in Wisconsin complained their larger competitor drafted the, and administrated the codes and regulations that required the listing of their customer names and forced them to reveal trade secrets to already tough competition. It's why GE just posted, what was it, $77 million or 77, what, what was that headline today I saw? Some huge profit, giant gains in profit, yet paid no taxes. They helped draft it. Mr. Potter couldn't have the Bailey's billing, buildings in loan because George Bailey wouldn't get bribed off. And so Potter tried to destroy him any way he could. Our George Bailey has to be you, and I'll show him to you next. I asked you a month ago to get a group together and spread some love, organize something, and be a force for good. It's important that you are seen and known by members of your community, for when times break down, there's somebody of sanity they can trust. Help your neighbors remember these three things, faith, hope, and charity. All these things happen today. Thank you for responding. I talked to a guy on the radio today who said he went down to his local WIC center and handed out a few bags of groceries to some women, and inside he just left the note that said, you're not alone. This is from a Tea Party member. This is what we need to be. We have to be Mrs. Davies from It's a Wonderful Life. Remember the lady who stepped up to the counter and she said, well, I have $29, but I only need $17.50. We have to be her. When I say we're all going to take it, we're all going to sacrifice, we are. We already have. Ben Bernanke has already taken 20% of your savings, but it works out in the end. If somehow or another we can find the Frank Capra or Jimmy Stewart or Mrs. Davies inside all of us, remember, she was just responding to Jimmy Stewart saying, we're going to be okay. We're going to make it, but only if we stick together and do the right thing. I want you to do your own homework. Don't take my word for it on the Fed. Be careful because there's a lot of crazy conspiracy stuff out there. Do your own homework. The truth is scarier than any conspiracy. Tomorrow we begin the final chapter of the Glenn Beck program. Time to get the unanswered questions. Find out the end game tomorrow from New York. Good night, America.